Good morning, everyone. So I thought for today we would do a full tour of the pond. <clears throat> um, I've never really walked everybody all the way through what's in there. And um, shout outs to my boss because he said this would be a good idea and the pond was due for a water change. So I decided I'd go ahead and film it while I was doing that. Um, so to start off with, uh, this is how I do a water change in there. Um, it looks nice and pretty now. So this is my indoor rope fish pond. Um, let's dive in and see what's in there. So it's all built on a wood frame. And if you want to see how we put it all together, I will put a thing on here where you can click and see the construction videos. So it's all wood frame. There are problems with it though. So you've got water issues happening. This was kind of thrown together, not properly sealed. Um, you can see we've thrown a ton of silicone up around the edge because if you'll notice there's a leak. You can see the lines on the side of the pond where there was water leaking out around the seams. So before I tear the whole thing apart to get us through a little while longer, we threw a ton of silicone up in there. So there's going to be a whole breakdown video of this pond coming up because of this leak right here. See how it's, oh, that's cat hair. My cats like to sit up there. Don't don't look at that. Okay. So as far as equipment goes on this pond, there are only two things. There is this bubbler. I've got one dual bubbler that's throwing some bubbles back there. And then I have a heater. And that keeps the water and everything around 82 degrees. Um, there's a little bit of a temperature gradient in there because of where the heater's at, but works pretty well. So as far as plants go, on this left-hand side, we've got a big mat of pearl weed. Now, this grows into the water, and if you look, there's a bare patch kind of right in the middle of it. That happened within the last month, I would say, and I think it has something to do with this back door. That is my back door. It is now cold outside, and there's a gap in the lid of the pond think that is where cold air is coming in and the pearl weed doesn't like it. So this is Rotalia rotundifolia. Um, it was a lot bigger of a patch, but I believe since I put the pearl weed in, it's having some kind of a plant war with the pearl weed because it's starting to die back. And I know it's not the wisteria because that stuff can grow right in the middle of it and it has no problem with it. You'll also see a bunch of little spots where there's plants just kind of thrown on the ground in there. And those are my trash piles. Anytime I pull plants, instead of throwing them away, well, some of them I throw away, but most of them I just kind of throw around the outside edge because they're either going to decompose or they're going to grow. So I kind of like to see that. Um, the back wall is all Brazilian pennywort and Anubis. So there's an Anubis hiding in there. There's an Anubis right here. And then this pennywort kind of covers the whole back wall. There is another spot right here where it's gone bare, and I think that's again where the cold air is blowing through it and causing that to die back. So Brazilian pennywort all around, and then the water wisteria grows up out of the pond, and this is my favorite part, all these roots. I love the root systems. So the Brazilian pennywort actually throws roots on the walls and grabs the walls. You can see that. And then all this Anubis that's in here kind of throws its roots wherever it wants. And it's got much, much thicker roots. Um, <clears throat> if you look back here, you can actually see the rhizome. And then those roots actually kind of arch over to the other side right here. And they go up. If you can see that, those are the Anubis roots right there that go up and then down into the dirt. So all the dirt that's around the outside edge of the pond is organic potting soil. It's got a layer of eco-complete underneath it. And then the substrate of this pond is just organic potting soil with no cap. Um, so we're going to get into filming the inside of the pond, which looks crazy because this T5 light throws a lot of reflection on the surface. It's actually rigged up to a pulley so I can lower it. Or raise it if I want to but it causes a lot of problems with filming inside the pond so pennywort throws parts down into the pond water wisteria grows up out of the pond and that is water wisteria growing out of water but in a hundred percent humidity so you can see all the root systems it's all a big tangled mess down there I don't even know what I'm gonna do with all of that it's just 
roots and stems and craziness. It's but it's a reed fish pond or a rope fish pond, and they really really like that. <clears throat> That is where they stay most of the time, is underneath that wisteria mat, is where they like to hang out. So this is water wisteria grown 100% in water, and then you have water wisteria that is grown in 100% humidity, but out of the water. So it looks really, really similar to the underwater growth. The leaves are just starting to kind of tighten up a little bit. And then compare that to water wisteria right here, which is grown 100% out of water and in regular humidity. It looks like a totally different plant. So this plant was grown outside of my summer tubs and I kind of brought it in and shoved it in a vase. And it looks totally different, but it's exactly the same plant. So plants will grow differently depending on water parameters, humidity, whether they're touching the surface, whether they're out of the water, all of that. But you can see the difference in the exact same plant grown different ways. Now there's also Reishia. That pearlweed mat came from Lucas's house. It had Reishia in it. I keep trying to pull it out, throw it in my little trash pile here. Oh, that drives me nuts. It sticks to your fingers. <clears throat> Hashtag Reishia problems. So I've also got springtails and isopods in here. Um, the springtails came from Jeremy Morell which is awesome. He sent those back with Amber. The isopods actually came from Carrie at Science Gal Aquatics, um, and they are breeding like crazy in here, the springtails and the isopods. Those are actually Jaden's favorite part of the pond. She loves to come catch the roly-polies out of the pond. But they're breeding. There's all kind of baby ones in there, so I'll throw up a link to Science Gal Aquatics um, channel here. So you can go check her out. She's doing a lot of crazy things. She likes to keep those monster fish. She's got that arowana. Big 180-gallon tank. And also she water changes it with a pitcher because she is extra, extra champion. <clears throat> so huge shout out to her. But yeah, the isopods just run all around, eating up dead stuff and whatever. So here's a shot of uh, some of that Reishia that's actually decided to start growing where I like throw it outside of the pond. It's been grabbing a hold of the sides of the pond and growing. So rope fish pond tour wouldn't be complete without some shots of rope fish, right? You can see my hand trying to block the glare from that T5 light. That thing makes filming in here almost impossible, but you can tell it's dirt with no cap because you can see the dirt move every time they move their fins. <clears throat> It's definitely not capped. It definitely gets... You can see through it, but they, they muck it up a little bit. But they're usually pretty gentle as far as swimming around, so they don't really stir it up too much. Um, right now, they're all out running around because they did a water change, and that makes them come out and see me. Um, but generally, they are hiding in that wisteria mat. I call it a mat, but it's just really a bunch of water wisteria. So... Dirt with no cap, it's organic potting soil. I've got four adult-sized rope fish in here. Um, they've been in here the whole time. They do come out of the water. Um, I'll throw a link up to a video where you can watch them actually come out of the water. Um, they'll get up on land and grab things and pull them back down in and eat them. They will also just jump up there for no reason. Um, it's kind of hard to catch it nowadays because of all the plants, but... And also, I work two jobs, so it's hard to film anything. So yeah, that is my indoor rope fish pond. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the full tour. And now i got to close it up so that all this stuff that needs 100% humidity gets it back. i got to take this down and close the lid. And it's got all these, um, these three panels on it, so you can see through into it when the lid is down. Pretty awesome. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and uh, I will see you in the next one. Live your best life.